Gospel of the Lord. This homily is the second installation of six homilies that Deacon John started last week to close out the National Eucharistic Revival. So we'll be going with this theme until about mid-July. And as we all know, the word revival literally means to come alive again. And what we're trying to do right now is if you kind of picture like a campfire, you know, the fire dies down and there's some embers that are there and you get the bellows and you kind of put some air into it and all of a sudden the flames come up again. So that's what we're trying to do these six homilies. We know our love is there for Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament, but the idea is to reignite, reinflame our hearts with this love for him and his wonderful Eucharistic presence. And so the first point of my homily is that very word, Eucharist. Eucharist sounds like a strange word. It's originally from the Greek. What it literally means is thanksgiving. So when you tell people that you're going to Mass or going to church, but the technical term of what we're doing is like we're going to celebrate Eucharist. We're going to celebrate thanksgiving. And so... In the second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he has a really curious phrase. He speaks about thanksgiving that overflows for the glory of God. And I think that's actually what we do every week when we gather for Mass, right? We come to glorify God, just that song that we sing, glory to God in the highest. And here we are, all these weak, small, little human beings, we're raising our minds and our hearts, we're looking up to heaven, and we're glorifying God and we're praising him, and we're thanking him for all of the gifts in our lives, and they are so, so many. Why we come to church is to give thanks to God for all those things that perhaps we take for granted. The second point of my homily is at the end of Deacon John's, he posed one question. I want to pose two questions. And the first question is, It may seem very strange, but why do we eat as human beings? And I'm talking about breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, runs to Dairy Queen, right, when we need it. Why do we eat? Obviously, it gives us joy, it gives us pleasure, but I think there are three main reasons why we eat. And the first one is simply to stay alive. If you stop eating, you will die, right? Second one is to get strength, to get the strength that we need to face the challenges of the day. If we don't fuel our body, we're not going to be able to fulfill our responsibilities. And the third one is, I believe, is to bond with others. That's why we gather as a family to eat. We gather on major feast days. We gather on other occasions with friends. And we say it's breaking bread. And it's in those moments that we bond. And you see, Jesus does that all throughout the gospel. Some of his best ministry is done around the table when he's breaking bread with his friends and his relatives. Right? So those are the three reasons why we eat. So the second question, why do we come to church every week? Why do we come to Mass? And I think the answers are exactly the same. We come to Mass every week so that we can stay alive spiritually. Because when we stay away from the Eucharist, when we stay away from our Lord, we start to wither. We start to die spiritually. We also come to get strength from our Lord, get strength from our Lord to face those challenges that all of us have in our lives, and we need God's grace to help us get through the day, all those things that all of us are struggling with. And then the third thing, obviously, to bond with one another. And I love today's gospel. At the very beginning, it says they went to Jesus' home. And then when he's there, they're asking him at the end of the gospel, and your, your relatives are outside looking for you, and your brothers and your sisters. And he's like, who are my brothers and sisters? And he looked around, and he says, all of you. And I love that. When we come to Jesus' house each week, 
We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're bonding evermore. Every meal that we share together, every time we gather, we're bonding at a deeper and deeper level. So the third point of my homily is I want to bring you back in time. And I know the younger kids will not remember this, but I presume they've heard about it. But for those that are my age or older, you'll remember the Y2K Day, right? Y2K Day, January 1st, 2000. The day when we thought that the world was going to come to a grinding halt. Right? We thought the computers were going to malfunction, the power grids were going to go down, planes were going to fall from the sky, the crazy days, so much apprehension that everyone had. And of all of the days in world history, that was the day of my priestly ordination. <laughs> I had studied for 13 and a half years I was so excited, but we were also so worried. We had all these extra candles because we thought the lights might go out. We had megaphones because we thought the sound system may go out. And my companions, there were 23 of us, we were the first priest to be ordained in this new third Christian millennium. So it was exciting, it was wonderful. When the Mass began, I was smiling and I was crying. And it was just a mixture of so many different emotions and the Cardinal who ordained us, it was just so powerful. And he put the oil all over our hands and consecrated us. And it was just in so much awe. And then the moment came to give communion, my first time giving communion as a priest. And I was so nervous, so excited. But I was like, I have God in my hand. I'm going to give God to another human being. And I was like trembling with joy and fear and above all, awe, how awesome that was. And now that I'm coming up on my 25th anniversary, now you realize how easy it is to kind of lose that first fervor, right? I try so hard not to. I try to celebrate each Mass. I visit with my first one. But it's so easy. And it's like married couples, right? I have so many weddings that I'm doing these days. When you meet a couple for the first time and they come for the meeting, they're like holding hands and they're <laughs> bouncing in and they sit down and they, it's like they can't sit any closer to each other. <laughs> when you're having that first meeting and they're like so excited and everything and you're trying to prepare them. And then you meet them five years later, <laughs> 10 years later, 20 years later, like she doesn't listen to me, you know, <laughs> there's a lot, there's this, like, this kind of thing going on, right? It happens. Our first fervor can diminish. And that's what we're trying to do during this Eucharistic revival. Get out those bellows, inflame our hearts once again for the awe that we get to come into Jesus' house every week. We get to receive him in Holy Communion. How awesome that is to have God in my hands. So the takeaway message I want are three simple things that I think are good for all of us to do. Three really simple things that can kind of help us to be more intentional, more focused, more aware of what's actually happening when we gather every Sunday. And the first thing is really simple. When we come into church and we put our hands in the holy water and we bless ourselves, you know, many times I realize like, I'm going like this. I'm barely making the cross. So one of my best friends, she's always very intentional with what she does. And I remember the first time I was kind of making fun of her. But she'd come into church, she'd stand at the holy water font, and she'd bless herself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and like really made sure she covered all her bases. And I was like, like what are you doing? And she said, I'm putting on the shield of God. I need God's protection for this coming week. And so intentional. I'm like, it's good. Good that we pause and think about it. Or the second thing, we come into the church and we come into the pew and we do the 
half little fake, you know, genuflection, right? It's not meant to be a half-baked little kind of like nod. It's, it's really meant to be deep reverence. I'm in Jesus' home. I'm recognizing that he's here. Think about genuflecting. You don't genuflect anywhere else. I mean, do you genuflect when you go to the supermarket? No, I mean, do you genuflect when you go to work? I mean, do you genuflect when you go to your neighbors? I mean, we don't genuflect anywhere else. But to do it like I really mean it, that I know I'm in, in sacred ground. And if you can't genuflect because you have back problems or knee problems, it's all good. Then you can just do a real bow, but be aware. Be aware of why we do what we do. And then the third final thing is that, that high point, that apex of every Mass, that moment when we get to receive God in our hands. And we put our hands together like a throne, as St. Cyprian described so many years ago. And we get to receive God, to really say amen, to say it loudly, to say it strongly, because amen means I agree, I believe, I recognize God that you have blessed me. I give you so much thanks for all the gifts you've given me. And I praise you, I worship you, I adore you, I extol you. Because that's what happens week after week when we come into Jesus' house, that we bond ever stronger as brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.